everybody and welcome back to Coffee and Bible Time. If you are new here, my name is Taylor and on our YouTube channel we create faith-based videos to help you guys learn how to read your Bible and grow in a personal relationship with Christ. So if that interests you, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more free content. So the goal of today's video is to do a 10-minute Bible study and what I want to do is kind of just read through the passage with you and give you some questions that you can kind of go through on your own time um, like that you can journal through you could pause and journal and do it right away or you could go through the video with me for 10 minutes and then take time at the end to reflect so yes i'm so excited to be doing this with you let's get started before we get started I wanted to let you know that if you are interested in learning about the full storyline of the Bible, Old Testament to the New Testament, with several course videos made by me, Mentor Mama, and Ashley, we came out with course two in our big in-depth Bible study series. This is a 12-month in-depth Bible study series. Each month we're coming out with um, a very important new topic that is essential to learning how to in-depth study the Bible. And at the end of February, we launched the storyline of the Bible. We have quizzes, we have PDFs, we have presentation slides, and an in-depth Bible study video for you guys to go through um, to help really deepen your understanding of the Bible. If you feel like you're really confused when you're coming to read the Bible, like you don't really know what you're reading about, a large possibility of that being the case is probably because you could use some extra knowledge about the storyline of the Bible, and we are here to help you out with that. So if you're interested in that, we'll have a link down below. We'll also have it up in the card. So the passage that we're going to be going through today is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Let's read that together. I'm choosing NIV for my translation, but you could use any translation of choice. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set out before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So what we're going to do here today is just go in chunks here, starting with verse 1, then we'll go into verse 2, and lastly verse 3. So verse 1, let's read it again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run, run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The first question that I have for you guys to ask yourself is, number one, who is, quote unquote, the great cloud of witnesses? I would jot that down in your journal at first, and then when you have time, I would go ahead and go back and read through Hebrews 11. And Hebrews 11 is going to reveal to you who the great cloud of witnesses is. So, I won't answer that question for you, but the great cloud of witnesses is revealed in Hebrews 11. A hint for that would be Hebrews 11 verse 2, and then literally... Hebrews 11 verses 2 kind of unfolds in the rest of Hebrews 11. So yes, it's all of Hebrews 11 that you're going to be looking at for who these um, witnesses are. My second question, what does it mean to throw off whatever hinders you? And what does it mean to throw off the sins that so easily entangle you or get in the way? I love the two description words that we have here in the NIV translation of hindering and entangling um and at first it says that you should throw off everything that hinders you and it doesn't explicitly say throw off every sin that hinders you but just literally in in general anything that hinders you from running your race of life with christ in faith with perseverance and i can speak to myself when i say this that there are things in my life that are not necessarily sinful that I partake in or that I consume um, mentally that, you know, although they aren't sinful, they 
they aren't necessarily enhancing my walk with Christ and they aren't building me up in faith. And I would argue that if it's not a sin, but it is hindering you from potentially growing deeper roots in Christ or having a firm foundation in your identity with the Lord, that is something that you should consider, that you should question, okay, why am I partaking in these thoughts or these habits or these rituals or these routines that although might not be inherently sinful could be hindering me from my walk with God. So my question for you is what are things that aren't inherently sinful in your life but could be hindering you from your walk with God? And then my other question that I have for you here just in verse one is what are the sins that so easily entangle you? And what I think is so great about the word entangles, I feel like it encompasses just the pervasiveness of sin and what it does in our lives that the when you start to engage in sin, it, it kind of weaves into your everyday lifestyle. Maybe not every sin, but there are definitely sins that become habitual and become crutches in a lot of our lives. And that's why I think entangled is such a good word because some of these sins that we've gotten ourselves in, some of them might be emotional coping mechanisms. Um, they become so tangled up in our routines that we can't easily divorce them from our lifestyle anymore. So my other question for you is, what would be the sins that so easily entangle you? For verse one. Moving on to verse two here. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So now what we're doing here in verse 2 is we're taking a break from our introspection, looking inside of us, seeing what kind of sins we have, seeing the things that are hindering us from running the race of faith with Christ, with perseverance. And we're now choosing to look up heavenly word and fix our eyes on Jesus Christ. Why? Because the way that we run the race of life with perseverance, which was the tail end of verse 1 there, it continues on into verse 2. Saying, in other words, it's saying, run the race of life with perseverance by fixing your eyes on Jesus, who is the pioneer and the perfecter of your faith. In other words, Christ is the beginning of your faith, and he is in the sanctification process as you are growing to conform to his image. Um, and yes, ultimately at the end of life when we have run the race with perseverance, we are looking to run into his arms into eternity, into everlasting life with him. So my question for you when you're reading verse 2 is to journal through what did it mean for Christ to endure the cross to endure the scorning shame for the joy set before him what was the joy that was set before him so if you are struggling with answering that question um i would ask you to consider the gospel and to consider christ's heart for sinners um, and maybe this could delve into even more of a journaling conversation with you and the Lord of why do you delight in sinners so much that you would send yourself to die for us and let's lastly go to verse three consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart so what I want you to do is I want you to go to biblegateway.com type in Hebrews 12, colon 3. Click the search bar, and then as it comes up, it'll come up as one singular verse, but underneath the verse, it'll ask you Hebrews 12, 3 in all English translations. I would go ahead and click that, and when you click that, it's going to give you a list of all the different Bible translations, and you can see how each of the translations differ in their beginning section of what it means to consider. The latter half of verse 3 is saying, in order to not grow weary and lose heart, consider Christ. So that's why it's important for us to know what it means to consider Christ. And I would argue that 
considering Christ, if we're talking about practicality right now after we're done with this Bible study, would be to study Christ in the Gospels and what he looked like in the Gospels. If we want to see a life run with perseverance, a life with intentionality and obedience and perfect submission to the Father, we need to study what the life of Christ looked like in the Gospels. We should also read the epistles, which is um, letters in the New Testament. So there's a lot of books of the Bible that were or books of the Bible in the New Testament that were originally letters to um, specific churches, but now we have them in our New Testament, and they are a great tool for us to read and learn more about Christ. The Gospels tell us about Christ, but all the other books in the New Testament also tell us about Christ. And then I also want you guys to study and read in your next quiet time, or I want to challenge you in your next quiet time to read Colossians 1, 15 through 23. This passage is going to really blow your mind when it comes to understanding the supremacy of Christ and all that he has done for us even before time has begun, before he even died on the cross, did you know that Christ was alive? Did you know that Christ was with God before the earth was even formed? Um, so my challenge for you is to read Colossians 1, 15 through 23. That is an amazing passage. And then to end this video, I wanted to read Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 in the message translation. This is translation the message I believe is definitely more of a supplemental reading. It is more of a paraphrase than it is an actual translation of the Bible. I don't think any scholar would consider the message an actual translation. But it still is useful and it still is can be used as a tool for us to um, read after we study scriptures that are more close translations to the actual Greek in the New Testament or Hebrew from the Old. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. I think that that's a great finisher for this quick Bible study through Hebrews 1 through 3. I hope that you found it helpful. Comment down below things that you were challenged by, things that you learned, and I am praying that the Lord ministers to your soul through his word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for um, your written revelation of who you are. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And so with that being said, I just want to say thank you guys for watching today's video, and we'll see you in next week's video. Bye!